Hello, my friends, and welcome on back into Minecraft. Today, we are back here in the single player survival world in our port city, which is so, so cool. Last time we came through here and completely transformed the docks area that you are seeing now. We added in a crane, a lighthouse, some more storage areas, some small market stalls for some like fishmongers selling some seashells by the seashore. Say that five times fast. And a small inn down here at the very end, which is so freaking cool. I love all of it. It's so great. We added interiors to every single one of the structures as well, which was just fantastic to do. Today, however, we are going to be coming down here into the small boat docks area that we kind of transformed a little bit, changing up a lot of the ways that our walkways work and the wharfs or whatever you want to be calling them down here for the docks. And I want to do some underwater terraforming and see how we can make this area not be so much of this flat, gross mess down here. It doesn't have to be too deep of water since we have all of these boats. They're pretty shallow, like this big guy over here. Maybe there's a reason that these big ones are docking over here is because it's so shallow that they can't get into these areas, minus the fact that the docks are so small, but these are just for the local fishing boats. So with that being said, first things first, I have released a texture pack update over on Patreon for all of that one. The official one is going to be coming very, very soon. I just want to get a little bit of feedback on that before I fully release everything to the public on that one. A new painting has been added in our notice board here to add to the collection of the other custom paintings we have, which is now at five of them. Give me some ideas for other ones we can add in moving forwards. Red glass, pink glass, and magenta glass have all been turned into a fog texture. So you can add some more depth into your world by say doing something like this and you get a really, really cool magenta fog color throughout there and you can barely see what's through it. As you saw in the background, stripped acacia wood has been updated. So it's the same darker color that our acacia wood planks are. So it actually makes sense now instead of being the Mojang acacia wood planks. I fixed an issue with our iron block texture. So we're no longer seeing dots all over the place inside of these. So it actually is more of a consistent texture instead of random struts of things around here and finally our buckets were updated as well as the shears that brought them up into Jappa's new textures that he made for minecraft 1.14 felt the other shapes that we had were a little behind so wanted to make that cohesive with the new stuff bringing you all up to date on the world now we were able to come through here on stream last friday and completely remove all of these glaciers which is awesome i'm so happy to have these gone now. It's just so much nicer looking out into the water, not seeing these random glaciers out there. That was one of the biggest things that was on my list of things to remove that I just never got around to. So I'm very thankful we did it. We also decided that the polar bears that we have out here that are just swimming around, we're gonna eventually be transporting them up to the Nordic village where they're going to be kind of the worshiped entity up there of the polar bears or the bears or whatever it might be are going to be like the nordic inspired villages like sacred animal of sorts so i think it's going to be really cool to getting them up there any ideas you all have for that or anything that we should be adding around this port area of things that we could just add in for small things be sure to let me know but it, and we have a bunch of blue ice now we have like eight shulker eight shulker boxes of blue ice that we need to use so what do we do with it I brought over quite a few resources that we're going to be using down here. One thing I want to ask y'all about though, should we be using coral? I want to add it in today and see how it looks just as these little guys, not the big full blocks of coral. But before we get into that, I have done a little bit of this in the past over here that we did a very, very long time ago. And I want to see what y'all thought on this one and give y'all a reference of what we're going to be doing moving forward. This was before 1.14, so we only had cobblestone stairs and slabs. This was right after 1.13 was introduced. So you're going to see a lot more cobblestone in this side than we normally have. But this is the general idea of what we're going for. Just this roughened up area where everything here is just kind of broken up, very roughened down. I want to add in like a sunken ship and some other things like that around the area. But I think this overall theme right here of all the life and seagrass and everything all around the place is pretty cool. We can add in a few like sunken down ships, like I mentioned, maybe some areas where the rock on the side over there fell off, some toppled cargo, all that type of stuff. We got plenty of ideas that we can use to move forward with this one. One thing if you're doing underwater terraforming that you really wanna have, you can see in the upper right hand corner is we have the conduit buff right now, which means our air bubbles are not gonna be going down at all. We have full breath and I have hidden it right behind the wall inside there. We have a big old kelp farm inside of that structure over there, which is why we couldn't change the shape of it too much. 
But yeah, so if you see us standing under here for a long time without losing breath, that is exactly why. Now, the first thing I wanted to work on inside of here is figuring out the topography, the shape of our landscape, of what it's going to be looking like in general. So I was thinking we could come out here with some full blocks and kind of just do a few things like this. And I want to make this area look like it's pretty shallow. And maybe in some areas it comes up pretty high and we'll have some areas where it might even be breaching the surface just ever so slightly. So it looks like there's just a lot of things going on throughout here. But these areas, we want to make it look like they might have come, in down, come down here. Uh, somebody who works in the city might be taking care of the docks and they kind of chiseled these areas out where the boats are so that the boats can squeeze in here without worrying too much about running into things all over the place or having the bottom of their hole scratching across the base of the water. So I wanted to come throughout here and just start adding in a few of these things throughout this way and just stretching this stuff around and getting a good general idea of what we might do for the shape of these. And then we can just start adding in the rocky shapes and everything like that afterwards. Now, the reason why we're using cobblestone throughout this entire thing is because I feel like it is a much more roughened up stone. So it almost has a gravelly look to it when we start adding in andesite or stone. Then we can really start to smooth out some areas. But I feel like the cobblestone really helps fit this theme around here and helps to make it look a bit different than everything else we're seeing. I do also want to add in a bunch of sand along the base of this. So like the sand has been tracked into this area and moved back out because this part right here, which is all flattened out, that was actually land at one point in time way, way long ago. Uh, so we have removed quite a bit of land to be able to make these harbors, which means that we can start bringing in some of the sand here as well. I've got some rough lines in over here for where the rock structures are going to be. It's going to be very, very rocky up in this area, and it's going to actually be stretching all the way down to here. We'll probably change this whole area out. I kind of want to leave this area right here sunken down and add like a sunken boat down here that might be sticking up just below to the point of where you could still have a boat above that one. And this has been coming along pretty nicely so far. I like this one a lot. I think it's now time that we could start bringing in a few more bits of detail into the stone itself. But the structures, we have like little rock piles all the way around here. It's currently mostly attached into the back. I've kind of created this rock structure that comes up here to the top. Sorry, adding a little bit of mossy stone. And I've realized what I really, really like is using the water, the slabs and stairs underwater to make it look like there's just a half slab of water up there, which I think is really, really cool. It helps bring it a lot to life. And then back here, just start piling up some of the sand up into the rock. So it's not just down around the base that kind of scattered all over the place and kind of resting over everything I think is a cool touch. Now I only have four mossy stone left on me, but that's okay for now. What I wanted to do was start bringing in some of these andesite blocks and stone blocks first and foremost, and add those in just throughout the area. And then we'll bring in some of the slabs and stairs of this stuff too as well. I don't want to use too much of that though, because I think I really like the cobblestone look that we have down here. Having mostly cobblestone for this stuff, I think it'll give a better look from above water. Uh, when we're looking down into this place but we're not going to see too much detail down here because it's all underwater right and we're not going to light this up i want this to be on the darker side so we don't really have to worry about anything it's okay if drowns spawn down here they don't really spawn unless you're in the water anyways so it shouldn't be too much of an issue i swear with conduits it is so hard to tell what time of day it is the only reason i just now realize it's nighttime is because mr zombie decided to come down here and turn into a drown nearby us and we have no weapons on our hotbar. We've been in very much building mode. <laughs> I decided to bring this down into a rocky face coming all the way down to the bottom and added a bunch of detail work up here. The cool part about this one down here at the bottom, though, is we're going to have a small cave. I figured it'd be kind of fun to have a small cave right down in here. We will fill this in a little bit better, so it's not even going to be much larger than, say, like that. We'll bring like a wall up there and turn it into a little thing and maybe dry out the top section of it and add a little bit of a sandy base to it but i'm way out of those resources right now but this cliff face is now in the sand has been stretched down all the way over here i started adding in some of the coral and i think we're just going to use this tube coral i think it's pretty cool or the brain coral sorry i only got one left anyways and then added in some sunken barrels that maybe fell off right there that this one's just kind of barely floating and just slowly bringing in a bunch more of the items around here it's making this area feel so so alive Drowned buddy, I thought we got rid of you. Does anybody else notice that their like eye color and mouth color is kind of diamond colored? That's kind of cool. But it also all these fish started spawning around here. So I've been taking my water bucket around and just picking them up uh, from over there and bringing them back over here and just dropping them off. So we're getting a bunch of fish that are going to live in this area forever. Because if you bucket a fish 
and move it and put it back down, it won't despawn in the future, which I think is pretty cool. But this right here is what we got so far, and I like it a lot. I do hope you all enjoyed that prompt to time lapse there. I just want to get everything done. I figured we needed to do that and needed to make some more progress on here because it was starting to drag on a little bit for me as well. So I want to come down here now and add in a bit of a boat ruin. This is a boat design that I've seen on the Minecraft subreddit so many times recently, and we're going to build a sunken version of it. So this might look a little familiar to y'all, but all we do is come back through here and do something like this. I know it's super simple. And that's kind of the broken one. It looks like a little bit like a canoe. And then what we can do right there is get rid of that one, place one of those things down there. And I'm not gonna do that. If we do use a slab in our texture pack, we won't get those overlay textures. So you can do that pretty easily as well. And then we just stack up a bunch of fence gates coming or fences all the way up here to the top. The fence gates are the next one. There we go. Come on, get that back. The, all the floating items is killing me. It gets, there gets to be so many of them. But if we come over here and do a little guy like that facing that way and a little one right there facing that way, we should be able to oh no can we not waterlog these oh no that's a problem all right well i guess we're just gonna use regular fences instead of fence gates i totally forgot about that you can do that in bedrock though right you can waterlog those well on top of that i decided to come over here and trim down our kelp forest because that thing was so big the rest of this area is looking pretty sweet though i'm so so happy with it i do want to add in a smaller kelp area maybe like we kind of do everything underneath this boat and this area is more smoothed out and filled up with some kelp i think that'd be pretty cool but this has taken way longer than i thought it would to fix up this entire area over here all right the ship is fixed up now which is uh it looks perfectly good for a sunken ship down here maybe since it's sunken we need to add like break a few of these things off to make it look like you know there's a reason why it's down here instead of being a full ship just at the bottom of the water over here, I did also complete the base shape of our cavern. On the inside, it's more of a cave, not a cavern. It's not too big in here. But if anybody has ideas on what we could do with that, let me. I have an idea of like loosely connecting it up to the sewers. Maybe this is like a secret entrance or exit. So our magical scuba diver, assassins guild people, or you know people who can hold their breath long enough to go from there down to here, like any other Minecraft player could. Uh, they are able to sneak their way into the city completely undetected off of like a boat that maybe docks right here. Thought that'd be kind of a cool idea. If we should go forward with that one, let me know. Also, if y'all want to be seeing the sewers, I know people are really hyped about that one. Should we get back to that soon? I think next I'd like to actually tackle the front gatehouse. I think that'd be a good thing to do is to finally get that thing finished up. So that, that might be our next project. Can we get out here? No, we cannot. One thing I did want to mention real quickly while we're coming up here is a little custom tree well not a little one one that we were able to build up over on a twitch stream last week that i just want to say a big big thank you to guardian king for the amazing support over there and everybody else who's been supporting me over on twitch and hanging out over there that's been a lot of fun i've really had a lot of fun being able to get to know all of you and it's made it a really enjoyable experience but anyways, this tree right here we built is three spruce trees that are kind of interconnected here in the middle and growing out of each other up into the sky, which is very, very cool. And it's just kind of grown all over the place, looking a little bit like a, a crown was the idea with the three points on it. But I just thought it was a really cool tree, and I wanted to point it out to y'all here today. We're going to be getting back to the forest here pretty soon. I know we haven't really done a big time lapse of these recently, but I've been so busy with everything else, everybody. You have no idea how much stuff has been going on in the background recently. I'm coming for you soon, Gatehouse. Soon you will actually look good. I was thinking since we've done so much work underwater out here and working in our docks area, I thought it'd be fun to finish off today's episode by building one of those fishing boats that we've been talking about recently out here in the water. Right now, I believe we are in a frozen ocean biome. So unfortunately, we need to be careful of where we're doing this stuff because we recently cleared all those icebergs out of here and if we start building things inside of this area 
all of that ice and everything is going to start reforming. So unfortunately, we do need to avoid the frozen ocean areas. But I think we can get a cool spot. I was thinking, I think cold ocean is totally fine to be building in. I think that's going to be the good spot for us to go. So something just like right out in this area where they're just kind of trolling along and doing their thing. So I know we're uh, having a little bit of hard time flying right now. But I was thinking it'd be kind of nice to bring out like, what is that, six? And let's shoot for seven right there. And I want to make the base of this one be pretty, pretty small so that we can come down here and do like five like that. And then just do like along the sides and start to round this structure out a little bit for the whole of the boat. I've kind of realized that on these boats that we're building, we're just going to start kind of making it up as we go. And I'm thinking this is probably a little bit too small. Maybe we make this a few blocks longer. Sorry for the F3 screen being there. So let's extend this out. One, two, three, and four. I want it to be skinny though. I don't want it to be too like wide. So we want to make sure we have a pretty skinny boat going along here. This is just a small local fishing boat. So we don't need to have anything too crazy for it. We can have a really, really skinny one out here. And I don't think I have enough of these. But rotating them around and moving it so we... Oh, oh, I placed one all the way down here. Not sure quite how that happened. But rotating them around so that we now have two blocks showing on each end. We should be able to fit them in here. And then we can take our spruce stairs and bring those on this side. And then we should have the base shape of the whole of a boat. I've been working on the front of this. And I think it's something worthwhile to keep pursuing for now. We'll see. But it just kind of comes up by slabs right there. And then it steps up. And I brought in some strip spruce wood in here as well to mix it up so it has a different texture to it. And looks a bit more loggy. But let's see if we can't reproduce this one. All we're going to do back here is coming through is that guy right there. Do some stairs on top of these. And then throw in some spruce logs right on the sides of this. And do something right like that. And then we can kind of start bringing these things up with some more spruce log action right here. And doing that one. And then the last bits of spruce log is you bring out two right on top of here. And then you can just strip all those. And that's all the spruce log action we need. And on top of these, just add in some stairs and stairs and then do something right like that. And we're pretty much good. That's kind of duplicating everything up. That's the front all the way to the back. And I think it's pretty good for now. I got to figure out what we're going to do as far as these side ones, because I wish I wish we had vertical slabs right now. Normally, I'm not like a huge proponent of the vertical slabs because I think it's kind of not super needed in Minecraft, but I don't want to bring it out a whole nother block. But I feel like I also don't want to bring in just trap doors straight along like in a line right there. Extended it out on the side doesn't actually look too half bad. So I think we will keep that for a while. And I meant to land on top of the boat there. But I think that actually evens it out. So it's pretty good. When you stretch it out the entire distance, it doesn't make it look too much wider. And the boat is pretty dang long at this point. So it's not too bad. And the way we can kind of hide this detail was by adding that trap door in there. But I'm almost thinking that I want to bring in some more spruce logs and just kind of do something like that and make the front of these a little bit skinnier. I feel like that might look a little bit better for the overall shape of this one. Bit of an update on getting the sail in here. I'm trying to make it look like it's getting hit by the wind. So they're going off in that direction. And I think I want to bump those like those two blocks of wool and that one out just one block further. And then we can actually start filling everything in here. And we might need to change the height of that just a little bit so they're not directly even. I feel like that's a little off. But we're taking a look at it from our old crow's nest up here. And I think it's a good vantage point for this boat. But things are really coming along here. And there we go. The sails are now in. They are all hooked up all over the place. And I think it's pretty good. I know it's a lot of fences around here. But it felt so bland without adding them in. And it felt like this really structured everything down to the actual boat itself. So I kind of like them. I don't know if they're fully accurate. I feel like that one right there is pretty accurate. I don't know if that would be like attaching to there or not or those attaching to any of those things. But I felt like it works for now. Uh, next thing I wanted to do was these are supposed to be fishermen, right? So we would need to make it look like they're actually out here fishing. So I figured we could have on this side over here. Uh, maybe instead of these, we'll have drowned on. No, uh, I want to use some fence gates. I feel like fence gates, like three fence gates. And then like four or five fences out here could be a pretty good way to do it. So let me change this out afterwards. But the idea is and eh, that's a little too much. Let's bring it back in one. But I want to use cobwebs here to look like fish nets. And the problem with cobwebs is, is that if they touch the water, like they get in the water, they're actually going to be break. They're going to break. So unfortunately, we got to be pretty careful with what we're doing with these ones. But I want to do that. And I totally no, I have shears in my inventory. So I was thinking we could take out like you. This is going to take forever being while swimming. <laughs> 
and something like this just to make it look like there's a net along the surface as they're moving that way they have their big net there and they're trying to catch all of the fishies and then inside of here on this side to make it look like it, the boat won't just topple here with having this big beam out we can add a bunch of storage sections down into this section of where the fish would actually be stored so i'm gonna get to work on building some of those things out as well and that my friends is gonna have to do it for today's episode i do hope you all enjoyed this one i had so much fun coming in here afterwards and building up this awesome fishing boat on top of that we were able to build up so much of the underwater terraforming area underneath our small dock area which was so fun to work on i hope you all enjoyed that one if you have any ideas of what we can be adding into this world moving forward be sure to let me know on that We've got a lot of things that we need to tackle. Next episode, we are going to be moving over to working on the gatehouse itself. I think it's finally time that we tear that sucker down and build up a fancy new one that actually fits this city a little bit better. So again, thank you all so very much for watching. Please be sure to hit that like button. If you are enjoying the videos here and all that cool stuff, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new. By this time this video came out, we probably recently just broke over 150,000 subscribers on the channel, which is absolutely insane. At this point of recording it, we are less than 50 away, so that is so freaking cool. Thank you all so very much for the continued support and everything that and allowing me to do this as a full-time job. So with that, I'll leave you all here, and I'll catch you all on the flip side.